lytter til din lokale radio i Aarhus på FM 98,7 MHz og 89,5 MHz. Hello everyone, you are listening to your <laughs> Hello everyone, as you could see, our intro was finally played. However, we got a miscommunication with our technicians, so we thought we should speak earlier. But here we are. Hello everyone, this is Anna. And this is Marta. And this is You've Got Five Options with the right intro, just played for three seconds, but we are improving all the time. Welcome to our live show. <laughs> it's a very, very a live show. <laughs> you, can, you can definitely see this is a live show. This is going live. It's not edited. So yeah, Sveno, don't worry. That's our technician. Don't worry. This time intro was there. It was just too short. Next time it will be perfect. Yes, we definitely do hope so. But guys, we are so happy to be here on a Friday. Yes. Uh, with a lovely weather, the yes. sun is shining, so and it has been like that entire week. Yeah, we don't know what to do with ourselves because we, we are here in Denmark and it's our five seconds of summer. So basically there is a lot of confusion going on, like, okay, sh should we like go out and just lay down on the on the ground and take the sun in or what shall we do, what shall we do? Very confusing period. Yeah, but very nice. I am so grateful. Every day of nice weather is a day to be deeply appreciated and, you know, the full gratitude mode on. Yes, that's why we uh, that's why we love to live in Denmark, because our appreciation towards weather grow significantly. Yeah, it's it's quite amazing. But guys, today we also <coughs> have a beautiful topic for you. Yes, just as beautiful as the weather. The topic is friendship. Yes, so we will be discussing friendship today. But before we will get to that, we also have a little announcement that we have made on our Facebook fan page and wherever we could. Guys, you can actually call us or send us a text message today while we are having our live show. So if you have any thought or any comment to anything that we will be saying, you can simply call us or text us at six zero two nine seven five five zero, and we will actually try to answer. I'm saying try to answer because we never tried it before, so <laughs> we haven't tested it neither, but we will try to answer. Marta, can you repeat the phone number? I can, yes, of course, it's six zero two nine seven five five zero yes and because we don't have a phone operator uh, marta will be um, operating our phone so marta good luck thank you <laughs> <laughs> she was chosen for the task because it's an iphone and i don't have an iphone and i was like uh, probably i will get more confused so yeah guys so it would be lovely if you would send us a text message or call us because we would love to hear from you but yes, as Marta said, the topic today is friendship. And you know what? If you could call us, that would be better because I don't see a message up on that uh, iPhone. Oh. That's not <laughs> my own iPhone. So uh, calling is better until we figure out the messages part. It I'm sure they are somewhere there, but it's just not. Uh, um, yeah, OK. No, normally, like there should be like a notification popping out or something. We will have it figured out after today, but you guys have to help us to figure out. So we are waiting for getting messages and phone calls. If the messages are not uh, replied to, you know why. <laughs> you know why, exactly. <laughs> and again, if you have a pen and paper, the number is, I will give you three seconds to run for the paper and the pen. Yes, yes, I'm saying it. Six, zero. Two nine seven five five zero. So, guys, we are waiting for your phone calls and we are waiting for your text messages. Definitely, we are, uh, and we would like to talk to you about friendship right now. And the first topic we would like to take is 
facts about friendship. Yes, because we have prepared a lot of fascinating topics today. So uh, one is what Marta will actually shovel to me because you know that she likes to come with this smart facts and then you can hear my reaction live. So it will be the same concept as on our last live show. Then we will also talk about friends with benefits and being friends with an ex. And we actually have made a survey on social media if you believe that those concepts are possible. And then we will talk about building a real friendship online and we will finish with a lovely topic of frenemies. So I think we should start with our wonderful facts about friendship. And I am waiting to be surprised, Marta. So I have, of course, uh, selected five facts as we are. You've got five options. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. So the first fact is friends are good for your health and life. Ooh. And I have uh, I have found several things here. Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, I have found on those facts on the internet. Of course, I have looked into several different um, articles. Mm -hmm. So uh, that was like you know from several different sources, and I found that when faced with major illness, individuals with a good social network are in a better position to survive. Yes, and I think it's connected with the amount of people you can call when you are sick. <laughs> that's my private opinion. Not only, but that's number one. You know, there are those people who are afraid that they are alone and they will die alone in their apartment and they will be eaten by their cats or dogs. I don't know from where this came from. If you have more friends, they are checking up on you and you are having contact. So actually, uh, I think in a very plain way, this is totally true. And it's also uh, about another fact. It's scientifically proven that the company of good friends reduces stress in life. Mm -hmm. So it's also the general f stress level factor throughout your lifetime can be reduced if you have some good friends. Unless you have frenemies, but we will talk about this later. But why do you think that is, Marta? I think it is, well, first of all, you can share your concerns with your friends. You can talk about them. But I think it's also because you know you have people you can count on. You have that uh, security net that you can fall back to. So I think that's definitely, uh, you know, it makes a lot of sense. I'm not shocked by that fact, but I still have another one connected to health. Give it to me. And it is your close friends influence your weight. What? Yes. If you have close friends who are very likely, you know, like very healthy, taking care of their diet and so on, you are much more likely to take care of your diet. That, uh, is this why we are so young and beautiful, Marta, do you think? Yes, totally. I, I think that that's the secret. Mm -hmm. But I have to say that I agree. Cannot believe I'm saying it, although I always agree with everything that you are saying. But Marta, imagine that you are hanging out with your friends. And you know, when you hang out, you go to someone's house, we visit each other and so on. If you are serving me some kind of a big fat pizza and chips, I will eat it. So it's even that stupid things when or for instance, it's what you choose to go for a restaurant for or, you know, if you are drinking a lot of beer with your friend, I think it's, uh, you know, because you do the same thing with your friend. So you are absolutely right. So, well, first of all, this is facts found on the Internet. So it's not me saying all those wise things. It's just me, you know, finding them and then commenting on them. But that was the facts on friends are good for your health and life. Mm -hmm. And the second fact is that friendship is one of the very first things we learn about. OK, so there was a study conducted in January 2014 mm -hmm. where it was discovered that babies learn to recognize the emotions connected with friendship before they start talking and walking. So wow. already as early as nine months old, mm -hmm. the friends, the you know, the smart people were able to detect the reactions in babies, mm -hmm. pointing out of babies being able to uh, react to friendship. Wow, that's so cute. It's adorable. Yeah, it's, it's quite amazing. It's one of the first emotions that babies react to. Friendship. Yeah. See, so friendship is magic, guys. Yeah. Yeah. 
So that was the fact number two. That one I thought was quite interesting and adorable. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know about it. So uh, that was very, very interesting. And fact number three is our friends truly bring out the best in us. Do they really? Unless they are frenemies. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But actually it has uh, it has something to do with the actual research conducted in 2013 at the University of California. Mm -hmm. Is that people look more attractive in a group than they do individually. Really? Yeah. Uh, wait, uh, there was something in some sitcom about it, like the cheerleader, cheerleader effect. effect. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So uh, it, it was in How I Met Your Mother. I remember now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, the study uh, says or claims that the visual system automatically computes a sample representation of faces presented in the group, which, uh, you know, translated into normal uh, yeah, words. Language. If you are with your friends that mm -hmm. are your chill readers, yeah? yeah, people who love you, who think you're fun and cool mm -hmm. and so on, they have a special way of looking at you. Mm -hmm. They have a special way of talking to you, talking about you and so on. So just by the way people look at you and kind of like, you know, promote you, mm -hmm. uh, makes you look much better than mm -hmm. if you were alone. Of course, if you are surrounded with frenemies, that will work the other way around. <laughs> of course. Mm -hmm. But interesting. It, it, interesting. So, uh, but, but do you think it has something to do with having, for instance, attractive friends as well? How does it, how would it l work if you are having a group of friends, girlfriends, and they are all very attractive? Do you think that attractiveness like shines through on the entire group? I think, well, I haven't read that study in detail, so mm -hmm. I don't know what are the exact, you know, scientific fa scientific facts behind it. Mm -hmm. But I think in a true group of friends, we are talking now about this, you know, cool cliques where you actually the squad. love each other and so on. But even just the pure fact that you have a group of people who like to hang out with you. Yeah, that already exactly. makes you attractive. So of that's one thing. And yeah, so I think it's... It could be could be it's yeah it's the same like even if you see a family you know that is happy with each other you know like with nice kids and you know laughing and stuff you think oh what a beautiful family so there is something in it and if you see like a group of grumpy people sitting and looking like they don't want to be there yeah none of you look pretty guys so surround yourself with a fantastic friends yeah and now the fact four will be a little bit about the numbers of friends. And I found it a little bit confusing because I got uh, confusing facts from different articles on the Internet. Please confuse me then. Yeah. But first of all, the interesting fact is that we make about, you know, statistically 396 friends in a lifetime. Damn you, Facebook. But only one out of 12 friendships last. One out of 12 friendship last from yeah. 300. Oh, my God. That's a quite a mathematics that I will not. I, I'm not taking the challenge, but no. roughly what, like 30? I'm not taking the challenge <laughs> in reality. <laughs> okay, you guys, if you have a solution to our mathematical equation, you are most welcome to call us and tell us at 60297550 what is the answer. <laughs> But no, we are not counting that. But it's interesting. It's quite a lot of friends that we are making over over the lifetime. Indeed, indeed, indeed isn't it? But now the more the, the confusing fact about the Give numbers. It to me. Give it to me. So one study says that in the last twenty years, a number of entrusted friends fell by a third. So we have three times less like real trusted friends than mm -hmm. twenty years ago. We, as you know, human population. And also the very sad part is the proportion of people with no friends has doubled. Seriously. And there, that's where the confusing part uh, comes is another study shows that we have more friends than ever. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they count the Facebook friends, Marta. Probably. I yeah. think the social media friends, you know, the people, you know, from pictures. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But Anyway, there was a study at the University of Oxford indicating that people have a certain capacity when it comes to man managing friendships. Mm -hmm. And there was something calculated by an anthropologist called Robin Dunbar uh, that gave a Dunbar number <laughs> that we are, <laughs> yes, that we can maximum handle 
150 uh, friends at once. We can't m do more than that. I'm That's surprised I can barely handle five. <laughs> it's like, what? <laughs> what That's kind of quite a high number, isn't it? Yeah, it's like how to handle 150 pe people. Jesus. Yeah, and uh, Dunbar claims that thanks to social networks uh, okay. and like, you know, Facebook, our capacity has mm -hmm. risen because it's easier to manage those course, uh, friendships. You know. you know, you can inform your friends about your life and stay informed about their lives without ever talking to them. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Plus, you always remember the birthday because they pop out in Facebook before you had to make an actual freaking effort. You had to have it noted down, remember about it, call a person. Now you just post on, on the wall, you know, happy birthday, pal, have a great day. So yeah, maybe, maybe that's why because I cannot imagine handling 150 people and yet I handle all my Facebook friends. So maybe that's actually not so confusing. Maybe it's about the number of friends like acquaintances mm -hmm. and then the number of entrusted friends or like close friends yeah. has decreased because we actually don't have the time to spend time with the close actual friends yeah. in real life because we manage so much in the online world. Yes, and I think that it's also confusion, you know, with the vocabulary, because in English you have friends, and that means so many different levels of friendship. When in Polish you make a distinction between uh, like a friend, an acquaintance, and a colleague, and you know, so I think that also adds up to the confusion of this whole research, because we don't know what kind of friends the guy meant when he said friends. Yeah. yeah. And the last fact, give it to me, which I think is, you know, mind blowing and I don't like it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Marta made a statement. Yeah. She doesn't like the fact that she's presenting. Love loses you friends. Ah, yeah, but it is so that the research has revealed that when you gain a new romantic partner, you may lose two of your closest friends. Because if it was about those, you know, any friends, those Facebook friends, you know, it doesn't yes. matter. <laughs> but it is about, you know, usually people, let's say, have about five mm -hmm. closest friends. And out of these five closest friends, you may lose two because you gain a new romantic partner. Do they show, do they say why? Yeah, well, it usually has something to do, of course, with the time. Yeah. You have to invest a lot of time and effort into establishing, maintaining your new romantic relationship. See? And you simply don't have the... Uh, you know, the time for your friends. Mm -hmm. So it has to do a lot with something as simple as the time. Hmm. I will give a I will give a bold statement. And I hope that no one will feel offended or take it personally in the world while listening. But I also think that sometimes we hang out with our friends when we are single, because we have nothing better to do. Or we are uh, prone to go out because we are actually subconsciously looking for a romance. And uh, I have seen situations when you know, someone gets a boyfriend or girlfriend and suddenly disappears, you know, suddenly there is almost no contact and, and so on. Because one thing is that yeah, time is limited and now you have a new romantic relationship but i think some people are using friendship as a as a backup option when they are single which is really sad and that's not the real friendship i would like to say and i would like to say that since friendship is good for our health and life mm -hmm. and by getting in a romantic relationship you are in a risk of losing two friends i would say you know watch your risks yeah, wa and watch your back. Yeah, wa wa watch your watch you dying alone in that kitchen floor. You know yeah. that that ro romantic relation that you are having may not last, but your friendship would last, and that friend can save your life. Yeah, so I would say, take care of your friendships, people. Definitely, Healthy. definitely. I'll be there for you. Marta, would you be there for me? How do you think? <laughs> how do you feel? What the hell are you? I thought you would say, how How dare you? <laughs> I, I don't know how do I think. <laughs> but I was just asking because uh, for those of you who have uh, tuned in today for the first time, me and Marta are actually very best friends since we were little. There was a very fascinating story about this on our first live show. So <laughs> I just want some kind of a recon re reconfirm our friendship <laughs> and I got how do you think <laughs> so I think that uh, that yeah I, I, I think you will be there for me but the question is will your friend with benefit be there for you 
And it's a very good question that, that <laughs> I don't really have an answer to because I have never tried uh, that kind of uh, friendship. But we do have some... You have a friends with benefits. It's me. My benefit is the wine that I have home. <laughs> no, but uh, friends with benefits... Uh, I don't know. It's. it's um, I would say friends with benefits, it's a tricky concept because... Many people think it's like a pink unicorn, you know, something that doesn't truly exist. But we have actually asked um, people uh, all over the world, meaning <laughs> the ones that are following our Facebook page, do they believe that friends with benefit is a concept that you can actually uh, sustain, that you can actually have friends with benefits? And we got some answers. And that's really great that we got some answers. Yes, actually, thank you, guys. We actually got quite some answers. And uh, I have to say that I was surprised. And yes, it might come from my own background. Uh, but I had a different perception before uh, we got the answers because I was convinced in my naivety that most of people will say no friends with benefits. It's not a concept that is sustainable. And guys, guess what? 58% of you have answered yes. And it was yes without even no explanations. Yes, it's totally possible. And 29% of you answered no. So actually most of the people who took part in this little uh, survey think that friends with benefits, it's a concept that you can sustain. What do you think about this, Marta? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm still trying to recover from the shock. Well, I would say that uh, I guess it depends on your definition of uh, friendship. And I guess when people talk about friends with benefits, they maybe don't consider those people as your closest friends, not as your, you know, totally the, you know, the buddies that you have known from your children and you will still be in contact until uh, you die. Mm -hmm. <laughs> But maybe it's just like a lighter version concept because we didn't talk about what friendship is because we thought, ah, friendship is something every now what it knows what it is. Yeah. But as we started talking about it and as we started to consider that actually in English language, friend is someone that you just know. Mm -hmm. Friend is someone with whom you hang out. Friend is someone with whom you are in the same class at work or something with, who, with whom you share any kind of social network. But actually, friend is also that person that you uh, might entrust your life. <laughs> yeah. So it's also, I guess, it, has, it go goes down to what does it mean, that friend? Yeah, because benefit. I would say more like colleague with benefit, that is something that kind of uh, resonate with me more because then it's a person that you are not so emotionally invested on other, uh, you know, uh, aspects than, than the romantic ones. So, yeah, but, you know, actually there were three responses that actually were like conditional responses. And uh, one of the person, uh, for instance, written that if one of the persons, maybe even both who have agreed on it, has mental issues. Okay, that was really weird phrasing, but then was an explanation. Low self-esteem, poor emotional management, etc. Or other bad demons in their head? No. Otherwise, if con uh, concrete boundaries are set with whom both are actually satisfied? Yes. And I think the tricky part within friends and benefits is that uh, those boundaries are very movable. Because when you have sex with someone and you are um, technically friends, you still can accidentally build a connection. So I think that uh, even if you have a uh, agreement from the beginning that you are just friends with benefits, uh, but then you start to regularly benefit from the friendship, I would imagine that there is a possibility that you actually um, catch feelings or catch attachment. Yeah, that you develop feelings mm -hmm. and attachment. And that's what I have to say that the friends uh, with whom I've been talking about it, the friends that have actually experienced uh, this kind of setup, they said that sooner or later, one of the sites has actually developed uh, some emotions, uh, some attachment, uh, expectations and so on. So I don't personally know anyone for, who has had such a setup with no challenges and, uh, you know, for a longer 
amount of time. Yeah, I actually also talked with one person about it and he said that he believes it's possible because he has experienced that setup and it worked for him. However, he also said that if you have a friend with benefit with whom you are meeting regularly, that's not a friend with benefit, that's a relationship that you don't want to admit you're having. So uh, I think it also about the frequency and regularity and all this kind of things. So that was a valid point. Another interesting comment that we have received was uh, from a guy who who wrote yes but the question is do really any girl wants friends with benefits relationship then how can you screw the guy's brain until the death if he wasn't if he hasn't has to pass through your crazy sheets that's the real question <laughs> i guess that's the real question <laughs> well thank you for that really strong comment but actually let's just focus on the first part the question is do really any girl wants a friend with benefit relationship Sounds a bit gender biased, I agree. But uh, yeah, I think the perception is that girls are going into friends with benefit relationship because they cannot get a relationship. So they hope something will change. That's a, some kind of general perception of it. I'm not sure if it's correct or not. But um, yeah, apparently guys are uh, and actually, I do have to say, uh, mostly guys answered yes to the question if uh, friends with benefits are possible. So those 58% are mostly male percent. I would say that as always, uh, the thing is correct and not correct at the same time, because I'm quite sure that there are many girls who enter into this kind of setup with hopes. <laughs> yes. And there are also many girls who truly want this kind of setup because they are fed up with having relationship with guys. Totally. They are strong, single women who want to be single and they want to live their life. They're happy with their life, but they still have some uh, sexual uh, desires uh, that need to be satisfied and uh, they might want to end up in this kind of setup and they might encounter guys who actually get emotionally attached and uh, so on. So as always in this kind of situation, I would say both both are true. Yes, uh, I actually uh, from my side, the, the last closing line is that uh, I have never really experienced this setup, but I have experienced um, meeting or observing men who wanted to enter uh, friends with benefits relations because they couldn't be in a relationship with. Oh, 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 oh. we <gasps> have a call. Guys, we okay, have a phone okay, call. we are gonna try it out now. Okay. Hello. Lina, we can. Lina, wait a second because we can barely hear you. I think our technician is trying to figure out how to set up the. Lina? Okay? No, we hear you very, very low. Very quietly. Very quiet. No, no. It's, it's, a, it's a setup at the radio, so our technician has to figure out. Figure out how to, how to do it, I guess. Okay, but guys, regardless of that. Uh, Lina, uh, whoa, thank you. And we are so excited to have our first phone call and maybe we are unable to hear you, but yet we, we, we do have a phone call, guys. Okay. Oh, can you try to say something now? Hi. Yes! yes. yes. <laughs> oh, I'm so happy that you can hear me now better. Yes, we can. Okay, Lina, so uh, where are you from? Are you from Aarhus? Uh, yes, I'm from Aarhus. Okay, perfect. Welcome to our show. You are our very first uh, caller. Oh my God, oh, I'm so I'm excited. So excited. <laughs> okay, Lina, so what did you want to tell us about? Do you like the show? I would like to say my opinion about friends with benefits. Okay. Because I think that it never works in the long run. Because always once I want something more like it's in love or more engaged. And I think that it's not going to last long. That's my opinion. Okay, Lina, do you have any experience in the topic, if I may ask? Uh, not exactly in, in this topic, but another topic that uh, you talked today about that uh, can can we be f friends, you know, with our ex or something. So mm -hmm. I think also we can't because uh, usually one side uh, still has some emotions and wants to be together and it's, you know, it's hard to divide. Yeah, that's uh, that's true. Actually, we will present the the research, you know, that we have done on friends with an ex, 
uh, very, very soon. And we have also interesting uh, results. But OK, Lina, so you would say that friends with benefits don't work and friends with ex also don't work. Yeah, I think that's so usually so one side is still in love and don't want to break up uh, unless both sides want, you know, uh, everything is like solved. But it, does, it means that maybe this relationship wasn't like real love. Maybe it was mm -hmm. from the beginning more friendship. Yeah, okay. Well, that makes a lot of sense. And Lina, I will be honest with you, this is something that I always had at the back of my head also when I was doing the uh, survey with Marta. And that's why I was quite surprised by, you know, by the results we got. But thanks a lot, Lina. And, uh, you know, now you are on air. Do you want to uh, greet someone or uh, you have your chance to say something? <laughs> I just want to say hello to my friends and my family and I'm so happy that I could reach and call you guys and awesome. I love your shows and wow. I listen to you every week. Thank you. Thank you so very much, Lina. And thank you very much for, for calling and have a fantastic weekend. Have a fantastic weekend. Hi, hi. Bye, bye. Bye, bye. My God, we got our first caller. So guys, you, you can actually call. As you can see, we also figured out how to pick up the phone and how to make you, uh, you know, hearable. So, guys, remember 6029-7550. We are waiting for your phone calls. And Lina has just opened another topic that we were about to discuss, which is friends with an ex. And she gave an opinion that, no, she doesn't think it's... Uh, Possible because what did she say, Marta? That uh, usually someone has some feelings still, right? Yeah. So, guys, are you ready to listen to the results of the survey? So, for the question, is friendship with an ex possible? 60% of you have replied yes. And 36% uh, of you have replied no. So, I was actually quite surprised because I uh, I also thought that the results will be different. I thought it will be more into the tone of what Lina have said. Well, I would say that it depends a lot on the question because if someone would ask me, is uh, friendship with an ex possible? I would say yes. If someone would ask me, is it a good idea? I would say probably not. <laughs> okay, there is a distinction here. Yeah, this because if someone asks, is it possible? I do think it's possible. Mm-hmm. But is it a good idea? Ah, uh, yeah. You know, I've tried it. I was a, I was a disciple of that, uh, of that uh, line of thinking before when I was younger, more idealistic and naive. I thought I would love to be friends with all my exes, not so many of them, to be honest. But uh, because you know, if you were with someone, you had a relationship, and then things ended. But you cared for each other. You loved each other at one point romantically. Uh, you shared moments of intimacy and and. So so on, so on. Why would you exclude that person from your life only because you are not together, especially if the breakup wasn't some kind of, uh, you know, terrible experience? But I think I, I learned by, by uh, my own experience that it's not so easy. A and I think that... Uh, experience has came back to me like boomerang a couple of times to show me that this is not so simple. So actually now within age and experience, I would say it's way more difficult than my naive uh, version from the past thought. So actually, I'm now not really a, a big fan of the concept. But it, that's my personal thing. So my opinion here is that uh, it's usually not a good idea to be close friends mm -hmm. with your exes. Yeah. But you can definitely be friends. That's but yeah, that's that's yeah, friends. Yeah. So that's where the friends friends uh, is a uh, big, you know, it depends what do you define, but being close friends like, you know, someone to whom you call when you are sad and uh, or you have a uh, problems with your new boyfriend or girlfriend. That's definitely not something that is easy to make work. I, I uh, my opinion, mm -hmm. but you can definitely be in the same group of friends. You can hang out together. You can um, be in the same yeah, circle. Yeah. As long as you both feel fine with it, of course. That's the trick. And guys, we will not go deeper into this topic because one of the reasons why we ask you this question is 
someone sent us a challenge uh, that we will be solving soon. Uh, it's a it's a girl that is asking how she can actually stay friends with her ex after ending a relationship. So we will prepare five options for her and we will discuss it um, on our radio show on Monday and Wednesday, I think in two or three weeks. So guys, then you can hear all about it. So I would just say you have the survey, you have 60% saying yes, you have Lina voice, my voice, Marta's voice, but for more details, you can tune in to our radio show in the future. And wrapping up, uh, maybe you are unable to stay uh, friends with an ex, but your friends will be there to pick you up when you will get a new ex. I think that's that's an old truth, yeah. Uh, coming back to that interesting fact, Marta, that you have mentioned, you know, that you are usually losing averagely to friends uh, when you get into the new relationship. I wonder if they made the opposite research. How many friends are you gaining back once your relationship is over? That's a very good question. And I guess it depends how long your relationships are. If you are on like a three month relationship mode, I guess you can regain <laughs> very easily. <laughs> many. Like, guys, I was just traveling, you know, I'm back. <laughs> if you are like, you know, 20 years, uh, it may be challenging. It might be challenging. Yeah. But I, I think uh, I do have to say from my experience, uh, my friends uh, always were absolutely wonderful uh, towards me when I was going through this phase of from a former to an ex. So I recommend friendship. <laughs> I do. I, I give a thumbs up for friendship. Yeah, I do as well. Although I don't go through that many breakups. No, <laughs> no. But but you still recommend friendship. Friendship yeah, is it's good for your health, guys. You know, Marta said it before. But guys, we also asked you one more question. And we didn't got really many answers, but we actually did got some. And the question was, can you build a real friendship online? Because uh, I think it's an interesting thing, taking in consideration everything that we have talked about and also the Facebook and the confusing data that Marta have presented, more and more friendships are built online, you know, now people are actually uh, even meeting online and, you know, forming relationships, getting married, of course, after some time that friendship or relationship uh, is usually coming true, like like people meet but uh, can you actually get really friends with someone online without never really meeting that person and guys we got i will say it honestly three answers only but we got yes three yeses so 100 percent of you said yes i actually have some friends that i've made online really yeah I uh, think it is, I mean, it depends, of course, how do you meet the people? I met the people through having common uh, life situations, so to speak. Many years ago, I think it was about 2008, I have joined a forum that uh, was gathering uh, ladies from Poland who have been in international relationships. And I have made some really dear, deep friendships on that forum. Mm -hmm. And we have that thing in common, we share that life situation where our husbands are not from the same country, mm -hmm. not from the same cultural circle. Uh, we started the forum where there were very few forum kids, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Now almost everyone who has remained in that forum has multiple children. So then we share a lot of um, co commonalities on how to deal with kids and multiple languages. And we just simply have a lot in common. And it, it looks like you also grow together, you know, if you are all getting pregnant, I'm not saying together, uh, just like, but you know, you all getting pregnant, you all are having kids that it, it grows the relationship and actually all of you individually, but also in a group, right? Yeah, so we've been talking to each other for 10 years. I mean, some of the girls uh, even longer. So we really know each other for a very long time. And I am quite sure that those people know about me much more than many of the friends that I have uh, in uh, real life. Except of me, of course. Of, except of you, of course. Uh, because we've been writing on hundreds of different topics from what kind of books we love, sharing recipes to problems with uh, our children and so on, everything, everything we share there, of course, whatever we would like to share. And uh, I definitely feel I have developed several really solid friendships there. 
and uh, I did meet some of the girls uh, over time mm -hmm. uh, in real life. How was it actually? How was the, the difference between, you know, uh, the forum persona and the actual person in front of you? Well, I must say that one person has shocked me and uh, I must say that um, it was, uh, but this was a person that was not very long in, in the forum mm -hmm. and I've met her in real life and I was like, oh, I would never be friends with that person in real life. Okay. But, uh, <laughs> the rest <laughs> yeah the rest of the people really really great impression okay and you feel like you know these people really mm -hmm. well and actually i have a friend that i meet now regularly every time i go to uh, new york city mm -hmm. and i meet her and it's quite amazing because we've met recently also with her friend and she was like so how girls did you meet and we were like you know what we've met online <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> it's so funny because we know so much about each other yeah we uh, we share stories and you know yeah. laugh and so on and and her friend asks so how did you meet yeah. and we start laughing online yeah Okay, yeah, but you know, actually, I, I'm thinking uh, that you know, this is this is how the reality is right now. You know, we are using uh, internet and social media and groups, so it's understandable that a lot of those friendships are being built online. And I actually think that it's like a very modern version of pen pals. When I was a kid, I was actually having pen pals and I was la writing letters by hand and sending to some people, and I was writing with them for years, you know, and you also learn about the life of another person and so on. Of course, as you Marta said, you can meet someone then in reality and then like, okay, what the hell? Uh, it can happen indeed. But uh, yeah, I actually think from all the three questions that we have posed today for this one, I would give definite, definite yes, you can build a real friendship online. Definitely with the amount of time spent online. Um, oh yes <laughs> oh yes <laughs> that's definitely a new reality yes I don't think it's bad I think it's just different I think it's uh, it's it's good I mean you're you're not all I mean if you don't have in your life around mm -hmm. you people would with, with whom you share that kind of uh, life situations like for example I living in Poland uh, 10 years ago I didn't I had zero friends who were married to an international yeah. Uh, sure uh, yeah you were married uh, to an inter to someone from another country but you were for example in Denmark mm -hmm. so we were also having an online friendship for a while I guess at that point true. of time uh, so definitely the, yeah the gadu gadu friendship yeah so mm -hmm. definitely good Yes. Okay, guys. So if you have an opinion about uh, friendship online, real friendship online, remember to text us or call us on 602975 um, and yeah, just shoot your opinion. We would be really interested to, to hear if you are agreeing with our respondents and with us because we are both very much for online friendship, I think. Are we? Are we, Marta? Yes, I was just checking. Actually, I discovered that it is possible to read messages on that phone. And I <gasps> saw that there were six messages, but they were all to another show. So, you know, <laughs> the other show. <laughs> the screw you. <laughs> what show? Uh, okay, let's not uh, bring it. No, no, no. Okay, but there are messages. So, see, people, we can he see your messages. So, just text us at 06 sorry, 6029-7550, and then we will be able to read it, and we would love to. But the last topic for today that we actually had is, for me, extremely fascinating, uh, because while I was making a research, I discovered that uh, this has happened to me as well. It's the topic of frenemies. And guys, if you don't know what frenemy is, I will tell you. Frenemy is someone who pretends to be close friends, but is an actual rival. So frenemies are often supportive and complimentary, sometimes to excess. But deep down, they harbor an ulterior motive to compete with you or humiliate you. Wow, that sounds pretty uh, tough. But uh, also known as relationship vampires, draining energy by inciting uh, drama, undermining or passive aggressive behavior. So now, guys, just imagine if you have friends or a friend or a person that you are friends with, but somehow you feel that something is 
off or you don't feel good with that person, you many times self-doubt yourself or you feel questioned or humiliated or whatsoever, there is a big chance that that person is not your friend. That person is a frenemy and there are actually seven classic signs that you have a frenemy and I can share it with you so you can detect them in your life. But Marta, do you have frenemies? So I guess I will be much more equipped in answering that question after you have told me your seven signs. I'm giving you. I'm giving you guys seven signs. So like really think about it because they are everywhere. So number one sign is constant attention. Frenemies often crave intimacy in relationships and want to be your besties five minutes after you meet them. They ask you for lunch date, friend you on Facebook and start texting all in the same day. So it's a very, very overwhelming person who wants to make very fast friends straight away. That is the first time they want to be too close to soon. The second uh, sign is oversharing. Frenemy will tell you their life story, including highly personal details over your first coffee. They will volunteer to pick up your kids at school, help you with big project or take uh, the check every time you go for a lunch. The thing is that this is a relationship that is very much in balance. So someone is like a bit throwing himself or her herself on you way too fast. The trick is that they will very soon expect exactly the same back. So uh, that kind of oversharing too fast could be a sign that you have a frenemy. Then criticism given as humor. So basically some kind of a, a weird jokes that could be potentially uh, painful, hurtful, offensive. But then when you are like, um, you know, act a bit offended, they are, hey, gee, that was just a joke. You know, I'm kidding. You you cannot take a joke or what? And, you know, I, I actually uh, been in situations when someone said that, you know, uh, something about my clothes, which was like, yeah, you wear something, something. And then I was like, whoa. And then, ah, that was a joke. You don't know the, the sense of humor. And actually, I have uh, realized that that was my frenemy. But that's another thing. But Marta, so far, so good. Three signs. Well, I must say that uh, I do not really, I haven't seen in my life, life too much of number one and two. Mm -hmm. So, or at least I don't recognize it right now, but I have a sensation as we go towards those signs that the other ones, they will be more the signs of immature <laughs> relationships. Mm -hmm. So those kind of things where you are maybe, you know, unable to say something openly mm -hmm. in a loving, nice communication. Mm -hmm. So you wrap it up in a nasty joke or something. Mm -hmm. So I have a sensation. I would like to hear the remaining four the signs, remaining signs. Yeah, to see mm -hmm. where it's going, which direction is going. So the fourth sign, uh, sign is left handed compliments. So basically, you are getting uh, compliments as that's not bad writing, especially for a person with your education. <laughs> Or, well, look who's on time for a meeting. Seriously, I'm glad you could make it this time. So basically, uh, it's a compliment that actually sh kind of, you know, sting you a little bit. That uh, compliment that, that in the end of the day turned out to be slightly offensive, you know. So uh, I, I have also experienced, not personally, but I have seen things like this. So that's actually sign number four. Then digging up dirt. Frenemies feed off neg oh, uh, sorry guys. Frenemies feed on negative information and always dig for more. So basically, it's a type of a person that would like to know how are you, and uh, if you feel bad, why you feel bad, and want to know all the juicy, dirty details about your fight with your husband, your wife, or situation at work. And they drill it and drill it and drill it. And if you will say, "I'm sorry, I cannot talk about it," or "I don't want to talk about it," they feel offended because, for instance, so you don't trust me, so. Uh, you don't want to be my friend and then actually in the end of the day they can take that information and use it against you. Number six, that nagging feeling. If you have the persistent feeling that someone in your relational web cannot be trusted or has an ulterior motive in seeking your friendship, 
pay attention, you're probably right. So this is basically intuition ba based thing. And the last sign is sabotage. So basically, when you see that your friend is sabotaging you, for instance, by being somewhere a little bit late when it was important for you, or by knowing that you have a very important presentation the next day, but you know, insist on you going drinking, you know, small little clues and cues. The whole idea behind the frenemy is that it's a person who is some sort of a energetical vampire who actually wants to drain your energy by pretending to be your friend. But now the funny thing is most of people who are acting as frenemies, they are unaware of their true motive. So basically they are harnessing the negative energy but they don't even know why or they do it subconsciously. So now, my Marta, when you have a full view, what do you say? I would say that I have uh, most likely experienced those kind of uh, friendships in my early days. I would say mm -hmm. when I was a teenager, I recognized this kind of uh, relationships. And that's where I guess uh, the maturity comes in. Yeah, uh, I think uh, usually it's much more likely to have this kind of friendships when you're young, mm -hmm. when you're young and people are still learning about themselves and doing this kind of th th thing simply because they don't know any better. Mm -hmm. And now I will give you, Marta, a very surprising uh, thought, because that was an article uh, posted on, on some kind of uh, a coach uh, site. He gave those seven signs and then he asked, please, in comments, uh, share your thoughts and tell me if you have frenemies, because he his opening claim is everyone has at least one or two frenemies. And there was so many comments from people who just realized that they have frenemies and those people are actually normal, uh, normal, mature people, not teenagers. So it's actually quite interesting that it is a sign of, I think, emotional immaturity, but it can happen at any age. I'm quite sure that it can happen at any age. And I also have this kind of sensation that for many years I have been telling myself that I am so lucky because I have wonderful friends. Mm. So I guess there is also something about, uh, you know, selection of friends and so on. Definitely. But I must say I am really lucky because I don't recognize uh, in my life uh, people who would be doing that to me. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, it could be that I'm blindsided. <laughs> no, actually, I, I know your friends and also myself and I don't really think you have frenemies. I have realized I had one frenemy, but I, I have cut the contact quite fast because I, I have noticed this. I wouldn't define it as a frenemy. I would define it as a difficult person. But now I know it was a frenemy. But guys, I think we are actually running out of time. So we have to say goodbye to you today. And we hope that you enjoyed it. And yeah, hopefully next time you will call us. We got phone call from Nina. Thank you. But guys, just call us next time. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs> You are listening to You've Got 5 Options show, where we solve your life challenges. Remember that you can visit our website, the5options.com, where you can submit your challenge or find our previous challenges. That's, That's all, folks! <laughs>